So today we're going to talk about spiritual conversations. And the notion of spiritual conversation is taken directly from the spiritual exercises, the fourth week, particularly Annotation 231, where it is written, love consists in a mutual sharing between two persons. One shares what one has with another who has less of it and welcomes from another what one has less of. Thus, when one has honor, one shares it with one who has less honor. Similarly with knowledge, so on and so forth. Spiritual conversations are the building blocks for discernment. Discernment is a serious consideration of bringing God into the conversation, of wanting to find out what is God's feeling, God's desire for a person or a project that we might be looking at, okay? So it really has to do with deferring to God first before actively making a decision. So spiritual conversations are the very building blocks of discernment. They are not talking about pious or holy things or explicitly spiritual things, but they are communal experiences of paying attention to experiences. So I am in an experience and I wanna pay attention to what's going on inside of me as I am having this experience. It's also paying attention to the experience of someone else. Principally, spiritual conversations are focused on the quality of active listening and the quality of intentional speaking, which are essential for good communal discern discernment and decision making. We're gonna break those apart in a little bit. So such quality of attention then is an act of reverence. It's an act of welcome and of hospitality. It welcomes the other for who they are. And it takes seriously what's ever going on inside of the individual to whom I am paying attention to. The purpose of spiritual conversations simply is threefold. First, to discover where and how Christ is active within a small group. Second, the purpose of spiritual conversation is to build communion of hearts and minds, which is absolutely essential for understanding the mission. And thirdly, it's to exercise the discipline of active listening and intentional speaking in a group. Let's look at active listening. The goal of active listening is to seek to pay attention and to understand people as they are. It's listening to the whole person, not just to what they're saying. It's also listening to the other and not concentrating on what I'm gonna say if I'm next. Okay, so it's leaving self behind. It's also welcoming non-judgmentally what someone else has to say. No matter what you think about what's being said, no matter what you think about the person, but it's actively welcoming. It requires a heart that is vulnerable. In other words, vulnerability is not precarity, okay? Vulnerability is that act of presence, a posture of presence, by which I'm allowing myself to be affected by what other people are saying. Vulnerability means all the guards are down around my heart, and I'm willing to be affected by the experience of another human being. And so that kind of vulnerability requires humility. 
It requires openness, patience, and a desire to be involved in a process, a process of reconciliation, which really is charismatic. It is the charism of the Society of Jesus. And the reconciliation is letting down expectations in order to welcome people as they are where they are. So humility and openness and patience, a desire to be involved in a process that will transform me. And it's also about um, bringing myself as gift to the other and to take all that happens in the process of spiritual conversations seriously. We're going to talk now a little bit around intentional speaking. The goal here is really a sincere expression of oneself. What am I experiencing? What am I feeling? What am I thinking? So intentional speaking is based in a habit of listening actively to oneself in order to be aware of how I am responding interiorly to others during a conversation. So what it's calling for is interior self-awareness. And it's going to guide how I engage in this conversation, the spiritual conversation. It also requires that I'm going to be monitor, monitoring or keeping vigilance uh, so that I am aware if any selfish motivations come to consciousness. So it won't derail the process. Okay. So it's the self-awareness that gives one speaking its intentional character. It's speaking from one's own experience and taking responsibility for what I say and what I feel. It's sharing the truth as I experience it and I see it. It has nothing to do with imposing that on the others in my group. At the end of the day, it is a self-gift. It is a free, generous offer of a gift to another in reciprocity for being actively listened to. The process of spiritual conversation is threefold. We begin in silence. We begin in silence so we create an atmosphere of welcoming God and the other. Times of silence are essential to help us establish the seriousness of what we are doing here. It also provides a respectful spiritual con context for the conversation because in this whole process of what's going on, we're really listening for three things. We're listening for what God might be conveying here, what the other person is conveying, and also what's going on inside of me and what do I want to convey to my community that is gathered here. So silence also settles our nervousness, our anxiety, and it places us into um, an intentional community of purpose. Secondly, the process needs confidentiality. When we come into a spiritual conversation circle, we need to know that others will hold respectfully, reverently, and confidentially what, what is being said here. Talking outside of the group of what was said in the group is disrespectful and unethical. Thirdly, the sharing. Sharing is giving oneself as gift. It's also accepting what others have offered to me as gift. Spiritual conversations, as we come to a conclusion here, it really is not about conversation. There is no discussion. There is no dialogue. There is no giving of advice. It simply is, as we began, going back to St. Ignatius in the fourth week of the exercises, and I quote, 
Love consists in a mutual sharing between two persons. For our purposes, spiritual conversation will take those two persons to three persons, four persons, five persons. But the essence is the same. Thank you.